So Richard, if you could introduce yourself and your role at Capita, please. Yeah, of course. So uh, I'm Richard Good. I'm the uh, Director of Enterprise Applications at Capita. Uh, so I lead our internal uh, enterprise software practice. So that's systems relating to uh, finance, HR, payroll, uh, operations. So usual candidates, Salesforce, SAP, Workday, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, yes, been, been at Capita for 26 years now. We are a uh, known best as a business process outsourcing company. So um, so we do uh, a range of different size of contracts from small to, to uh, enormous um, outsourcing services for both the government and uh, the private sector. So we do a lot of government outsourcing, um, managing um, defence sector contracts, things like army recruitment. We work with people like the Department for Work and Pensions and managing disability claims and so on. Um, then uh, in our private sector business, we're, we're well known for uh, contact centres. So we run a lot of back office uh, processes and uh, call centres for a number of large number of private sector clients. As we're in the midst of an AI boom, you know, ChatGPT came out just over two years ago. What has Capita's attitude been to AI possibly before ChatGPT came out as well as more recently? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, AI at Capita, um, I think it's fair to say it's now, it's now a core part of our strategy. So um, I know most businesses you can speak to will say AI uh, will pay, play a pivotal role over coming years. At Capita, um, I, I think we, we really mean it. So we've been going all in on AI. We've been early adopters of technology. Uh, agentic AI, large language models. Um, we think it's going to be, it's going to be transformative to the the business process outsourcing market. So, um, so yeah, we're we're working with um, a, a lot of key innovation partners. So heavily working with Salesforce, um, plus other partners, Microsoft, OpenAI, and so on. Um, and yeah, our, our strategy uh, going forward is AI should be transformative to most of the services we're we're doing and apart from agent force do you have any other ai implementations running at the moment we, we have a few um we're, we're working um across multiple partners um probably most progressed is uh is salesforce uh, obviously agent force um and also microsoft so we work uh with uh Copilot Studio and various API integrations. So effectively, the, the corporate version of ChatGPT, if you like. Um, we also have a few projects uh, with some of our other big partners. We work quite closely with uh, ServiceNow, uh, with SAP and with Workday as well. Uh, so we, we have quite a broad broad mix of uh, AI partners at the moment. And are you currently engaging all those partners with we, AI? We, we, we are. It's an interesting time, actually, uh, because it's such a... It's such a new technology area. Really, most of those companies, even the largest ones, have only really been doing AI at this level of maturity for the last, what, 12 months, 18 months or so. We're, we're, they're sort of finding their feet at the same time their customers are, basically. So there's there's quite a spirit of kind of co-innovation right now where they're finding their feet, we're finding their feet, and there's a lot of sort of collaborative innovation occurring. And what was your first or your initial reaction when you first heard about Agent Force and Agents? Yeah, I mean, first reactions to it, um, like a lot of people, very, very excited about the technology and, and the opportunity that it unlocks. So, um, so personally, um, I'm, I'm probably a fairly unusual manager in, in Capita in that I'm a little bit of a geek as well. So I, I build AI servers at home for fun. I enjoy experimenting with AI and large language models. Um, and I've been doing that for a while. So, so the minute that Salesforce came to me and showed me their technology and what they were doing and what they were planning their pipeline, I was immediately excited by the opportunities. Um, and I, I think um, what they're, they're doing in particular, um, this this agentic model now. So people have been doing chat GPT and basic large language model chat systems for, for a few years now. Um, I think the excitement of Agent Force is it's not just chat. It's not just simulating conversations with people. It's actually having intelligent bots with a level of agency so things that actually can help make decisions they can automate processes they can update records and systems they can push data around um it's it, it's really exciting it, it's it moves i think it moves ai into a, a, a new space it, it's almost you'll hear the term a lot but i, I think when people say agentic ai in particular is is the next industrial revolution um I don't think that's understating it, actually. I, I think generally over the next five years, that, that's what you're going to see with this kind of technology. Yeah, wow, very impressive. And 
What would your advice be for companies that are perhaps a bit nervous about this agentic revolution, you know, with agents running around in a, in a company doing various things? Um, it's an interesting question. Um, I, from my point of view and from Capital's point of view, I, I think the businesses are paralysed by fear and are going to go too slowly with AI or not going to grasp the opportunities are going too slowly. They're, they're being too cautious. But equally, on the flip side of that coin, businesses who try and run too fast with this, they drop the guardrails, they, they lose their attention to risk, also are unlocking quite a quite a risky um, situation for themselves as well. Um, I mean, the analogy that I've, I've often used with this, it's uh, and maybe it ties into the the industrial revolution concept of this the, the power of these kind of agentic area systems like agent force it's kind of like um imagine we had a new technology where it was easy and quick for anyone to build a nuclear power reactor for example we would unlock cheap and free energy for everyone and what we could do with it would be fantastic but then if you have to say to every individual yeah sure go forth build your own nuclear power reactor in your own back garden and see what you can do with it it would be catastrophic so you have to sort of treat this stuff with almost a level of respect for the power and the risk that it has you have to lose that paralyzing fear that stops you doing ai but do it in such a way that you are really mindful of and controlling the risks that can be unlocked if you do it badly wow very cool and what was your initial use case that you were using agent force for um, so uh, we've got a few use cases we are progressing at the moment. The most, um, the most advanced um, is in the, uh, the recruitment uh, sector. Um, the, there's a little bit of a story behind, I guess, how we got to this point as well. So um, just before uh, Dreamforce last year, um, around September time, um, our uh, CEO, Adolfo Hernandez, had some discussions with um, uh, senior management at Salesforce um, I believe with Benny Off and Zara and others, um, and we're talking about finding additional use cases for the launch of um, Agent Force that would be in either the recruitment industry or the uh, outsourcing industry. Uh, so um, they came up with the idea of looking at what we could do with our recruitment, our contact centres. Uh, they asked, asked myself and some of the management team to go over the Salesforce Tower, spend a day literally on lots of whiteboards, drawing up ideas, coming up with process design ideas and so on um, for how we might apply Agent Force into the recruitment industry. Um, and at the end of the day, we sort of came out of eight hours locked in a room with 20 whiteboards looking like the sort of Tokyo tube map of lines and boxes and so on. Um, and from that, that's where the idea came for doing a an end-to-end -end agentic automated process for volume recruitments. Um, so we worked with Salesforce to get off the ground. We, I think we managed to get the planning and all the contracts in place in about nine days, which is the, one of the fastest we've ever done anything of that sort of scale and complexity. Um, and we've been building out uh, over recent months ever since multiple phases of deployments. Uh, we went live um, with our first phase of Agent Force um, back in January, and we're building out a roadmap this year. Uh, so yeah, the use case really came from a, a, a top-down idea that cascaded into our, our IT and operational leadership and um, became a joint innovation idea between Capita Rooms and Salesforce. And the one you went live with in January, which one was that? Uh, that was the, the first phase of what we're calling volume recruitment. So that was putting uh, a Agent Force-based chatbot uh, into our recruitment website. Um, initially it's got features to assist with um, with job discovery so people can come to our website they can have a natural language chat with the um, the agent force bot um, they can ask for what job vacancies are available they can have a conversation about what job might be suitable for them so they can come in and say I have these skills or these experiences or I've got an interest in this sector and the bot will guide them to the right vacancy for them it'll have a conversation about where they want to work, do I want to be home base, full time, part time? And it's all about honing them into the right opportunity at Capita in terms of employment through a natural language conversation. Now, <clears throat> uh, that went live in uh, January this year. Um, we're currently building out new features to allow things like um, applicant screening, so uh, uploading CVs, matching people's applications to the job requirements, um, having the bots um, have conversations about any clarifying questions around the CV, anything we need to fill in in terms of missing information and so on, um, and then that data flows into our workday system. Um, so one of the, the things we, we were keen to do actually with this first phase, we didn't just want a, a 
chatbots connected to nothing. There's a lot of people right now who do early AI initiatives and really they just get a bot that can have a pleasant conversation but can't really do anything in terms of uh, agentic business processing. So we, we were keen from day one. We actually had some substance behind what our agent force bots can do. Um, so from the start of that project, we, we built um, Workday integrations to agent force um, via data cloud. So effectively we have a set of APIs that connect from Workday into data cloud where data is staged that is then used by agent force to expose uh, job vacancies, details, uh, to exchange CVs and so on as well. Um, so we, we think that's that's working fairly well so far. Um, and we tend to build that out through the rest of this year. So um, the third phase um, towards middle of the year of moments um, is going to include uh, automated correspondence. So inviting people to interviews, doing automation of diary synchronization for hiring managers and so on. Um, and the aspiration we're aiming for there really is for many of our recruitment processes from the point of discovering a job on a website or an agent force to effectively being interviewed or even being hired it can be a touchless process it can be entirely automated end-to-end -end. the person can be having um can have natural language conversations with a bot um, and the agent force bot will be doing all the back office tasks for correspondence for record updates creating vacancies and applications in the workday hr system um so we've got this we've got this vision that we're going to have a a, not only a very um, touchless process, but but also a very fast process. And what type of results have you seen? Are people using the agents so far? Yeah, it's um, it, it's going well so far. Actually, we um, we're surprised at the take up. We've had um, in the first few days, we had thousands of people using it. Um, we we we're still. Um, I think it's an important lesson in terms of how to do these projects, though. We, we we're trying to do phase one relatively low key still. Because one of the things we found with um, with agent force projects, but also just AI projects, uh, Gen AI in particular, um, it's very iterative. You can't do a big waterfall project where you design it all up front, you do a big bang launch with a lot of fanfare, and you step back and unleash your bot on the world. You you have to really do short sprints. You get your first features out. You get your first features out in a relatively low risk way and then you observe and you monitor and you go back and you correct and you fix and you fine tune so really with these sorts of projects you have to get a few sprints in and you have to get a few cycles in before you've got the confidence and the metrics to say yep this is working it's doing everything we expect it to it's delivering the value we expect let's ramp up the noise a bit let's shout about it a bit more let's really heavily signpost it so so far the trajectory is good we're on track to get to that point we've seen no major issues with it um no major sort of classic misbehaving of the bots um uh, i mean maybe a good time to raise raise this topic as well what one of the the fears that people always have with these kind of technologies is is it going to be like chat gpt where it's prone to hallucination where it's prone to give incorrect information or worse can be hijacked to do things you didn't intend so we did a lot of testing on phase one of our agent force project to make sure that we were confident that wouldn't be the case but uh we we obviously really wanted to test that as well to release and check it's behaving itself now the good news so far is is it, it is we're, we're not seeing any issues and to be honest we had some some very smart uh ai computer scientists at our ends try and jailbreak it during testing try and um find any possible way to do prompt injections to to get the system to go off topic and even to get it to to swear at them well and make inappropriate comments uh one of our tests is a fantastically fun day just swearing at a bottle down his laptop trying to get it to swear back or make it angry um or make it angry in, in, in global sense and um and we, we couldn't do it to be honest so um this i mean this may sound like a bit of a sound for sales pitch i guess but we, we've generally been quite impressed by the um the guardrails the truck the um the trust layer as salesforce call it it does seem to give really good protections against that kind of that kind of stuff